In this video, we're going to take a look at a topic called trigonometric integrals, but it's probably not what you're anticipating. We know how to integrate sine and cosine and secant squared and you know all of our basic trig integrals. Uh, this, this is a little bit different. Uh, what we're going to try to do here is look at integrals that have lots of trig functions in the integrand. You know, uh, sines to some high power and cosines to some high power, possibly multiplied together, maybe secants, maybe tangents as well. And look at some general strategies of how you uh, integrate these bigger trigonometric integrals here. Now, this topic as a whole is kind of a big topic, so we're going to have to break it down into smaller videos. And so you kind of have to watch the sequence to get the full uh, feel of, of how to do all of these. But in this video, we're just going to give just kind of a brief overview of what we're trying to do here and just kind of get you started on the right track. OK, so here we go. So if we have an integral with lots of trig functions um, such as this one, like the integral of sine to the fifth power of x times cosine of x dx, Here's here's the, the general thought process of what we're going to try to do, um, and then we'll adapt this to specific situations uh, when the time comes. All right, we're going to notice that, that look at this integral here. Do you see how oftentimes one of these guys will be the derivative of the other term, uh, especially when you have lots of trig functions? You know, if you have um, you know a tangent and you have a secant squared, well, secant squared is the derivative of tangent. And here, cosine is the derivative of sine and, and that sort of thing. So, so notice if we made a u substitution here where we let u be the sine, we let du be the cosine, which it is, then this turns out to basically be an integral of u to the fifth du. And, and that, that kind of shows the underlying thought process behind how we're going to do all of these trigonometric integrals here. We're going to have some part of the integrand to be in terms of u, and we're going to save some of the trig terms to be the du. All right, so let's let's write that down. So we're going to try to save one trig expression, kind of save it, put it in our pocket. We're going to push it to the end. We're going to save it towards towards the back end of the integral, uh, back there where the dx was. That guy is going to be the du. And then everything else on the front half of the integrand will be written in terms of some u or something like that. So the, the generic idea is this. We're going to have an integral where the front part is only in terms of one, one trig function. That could be u equals sine x, like in this previous example back here. Uh, it could be tan x. It could be secant. It could be, it could be anything. But it's only going to be in terms of one trig function for the majority of the terms. And then we're going to save one term. We're going to save one term uh, and keep that. And that's going to be the du on the back end. All right. Now you might say, well, well Devin, how, you know, how are you guaranteed that that's going to happen? Well, you're unfortunately, you're not guaranteed that's going to happen. So what you might possibly have to do in rewriting the remaining integrands in terms of u for this front half, you might need trig identities. For instance, if you had, you know, if you had a, a cosine squared in the front, but the cosine was supposed to be your du, you could convert the cosine squared into one minus sine squared by using a trig identity. So you, you might you might have to do that. And we'll do plenty of examples where, where we do that. Um, so just keep in mind, we'll need to know our, our basic trig identities. Now, quick rundown list. This is not a thorough list of every trig identity ever, but this is at least a, a starter list. What are some trig identities that we'll most certainly need to know? Well, of course, sine squared plus co sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. If you need to convert sines into cosines, no problem. Sine squared would equal one minus cosine squared. Likewise, secant squared equals one plus tangent squared. And so you can convert secants into tangents if you need to. And cosecants can be converted into cotangents or vice versa 
using this trig identity. So all three of those are very important. Uh, now, okay, so from here, where do we go? Well, we're actually gonna tackle these or most of these situations in separate videos because you kind of have some different strategies depending on what types of functions you have in your integrand, whether you have sines and cosines or secant and tangents and that sort of thing. So now we're gonna go on to a video where we specifically talk about just having sines and cosines in your integral. So you can, you can go ahead and watch that video now, and hopefully this just gives you a good kind of light introduction to what we're trying to do here.